Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a review, but not just of a product, of a road trip that I planned. I'm going to be giving you the do's and don'ts, the must sees and the must skips. I'm going to be telling you what I liked and did not like about the road trip, showing you pictures throughout, and I'm even gonna throw in some of my family's opinions so that you get like different viewpoints if you're planning on going on a similar road trip. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start by explaining to you how I planned this road trip. So the website I used is called Furco, F-U-R-K-O-T. I'll link it in the description below, but this website basically allows you to add any locations that you wanna visit and it gives you a really easy way to find hotels around the areas you're gonna be spending the night in and places to eat. But most importantly, it tells you what time you're going to arrive at each location. I planned my road trip to be eight days long and we were going to be leaving out of Houston and then and the main destination was gonna be the Grand Canyon, but once we left the Grand Canyon, we were actually going to drive to Las Vegas and then fly back home. So we did not drive back, but so many people told us that the drive back is just so hard after you've been in the car for so long to get to your destination. Some people said they didn't even go see the destinations that they had planned to see on the drive back because they were just so over the road trip at that point. So I did not want that to happen and I also want it to have more time to see things on the way there. I went with my mom, my dad, and my brother and and we of course rented a car because we were gonna be leaving it in Vegas. What does kind of suck is that you do have to unpack every night and pack back up again every morning to get back into the car. So you can't really move into your hotel room like maybe you usually would. So my tip for that would be to keep your suitcase as organized as possible so that it's easy just to pull out the things you need. And I packed my clothes in an order that I thought I would be wearing them in. So leaving Houston, the first place that we went to was Austin. I would mark Austin as a must-see, especially if you have someone with you that is not as excited about seeing all the natural features the earth has to offer. If you're a big city person, you're gonna think Austin's really pretty. Even just the landscape is really pretty. I gave it a nine out of 10. I went to check out the Hope Outdoor Gallery and that was really neat, but unfortunately, I think they're still planning on relocating that gallery. So make sure to see if that's still around if you're planning on checking that out too. One thing you have to remember about Austin is we are in Texas, which I think we forgot, and it was so hot. I only wish it had been a moderate 97 degrees instead of 107 <laughs> degrees with humidity that was off the charts. So don't forget your water and make sure you dress appropriately. We took a lot of cool pictures and then we also stopped by the Before I Die wall and the Greetings from Austin mural. Both of those murals were a lot smaller than we all expected them to be. So if you want to find any of the three things I talked about. I feel like there's one of them that I couldn't find on Google Maps, but you can easily look up the address online. We also visited the store Uncommon Objects. It's basically an antique store and they have a lot of really interesting items. We actually found a salt and pepper shaker that looked just like my dog Jinx. We also drove around downtown and went to see the Capitol building. We just saw it from outside and took some pictures, but it was pretty cool seeing it in person and it is a very beautiful building. We ate it in and out for dinner and for lunch. Oh yes, for lunch we tried to eat at Tula Hut, but there was some plumbing issue and so we instead went to the restaurant next door and I don't even think I wrote down what it was called. So if you want a lakeside lunch or dinner, look up Hula Hut. And if you don't wanna try Hula Hut, there are a few restaurants beside Hula Hut and they all have the same view. And then finally, okay, the next day we ate at Snooze for breakfast. Really cute little diner. The food was really good. I got the best pancakes in the world. Austin was pretty cool and interesting. Probably one of my favorite places. But I think it was a great start to our road trip just to have a lot of activity in one day so that you're kind of ready to settle down and say, okay, now we're gonna go far. The next day, we just drove a couple hours away to Fredericksburg. This is your typical small town in Texas. Fredericksburg, if you're not familiar with it, is a, is a very German town, a lot of German heritage. So there's more schnitzels in this world than you can ever imagine. And you can find most of them in Fredericksburg, Texas. It has a bunch of little shops. I actually think that this was probably my least favorite place. I'm already not much of a shopper myself, but it was so hot outside. And if you're planning on going when it's really hot outside, 
outside, then maybe reconsider. Because you are walking outside to get to each of the shops you're going to. Well, none of us bought anything. So if that says anything. I know Shelby did not enjoy Fredericksburg, but I think it would have been more fun if it was just us with maybe some of our girlfriends. It's really not a family place with teenagers. Fredericksburg sucked. It was terrible. Don't go. <laughs> the one thing I do recommend, even if you're not going to stop in Fredericksburg, but you're going to be maybe driving through the area or near the area, um, there's a scenic drive called Willow City Loop that's right outside Fredericksburg. So moving on from Fredericksburg, which like I said, I personally would probably skip at least if it's going to be really hot while you're there. Maybe stop by for a few hours, but try not to spend the night there. The following day was one of my favorite days, and I have two must-sees for you. The first is the Caverns of Sonora in Sonora, Texas. They are what they sound like. I'll put some cool fun facts about them right here if you want to scan those really quickly. Being in a place like that is like nothing you will ever experience. We were down there for about an hour, which seemed kind of long. I think we were all pretty tired of walking by the end of it because you are just going up and down stairs. I thought the Caverns of Sonora was pretty cool. Cool for like 15 minutes. Everything looks the same. It's a cave. I was a bit concerned that my son Pierce as you may know, is somewhat of a tall drink of water. The kid's a solid six foot three. I was a little worried about him walking through some of these geological formations and like jamming his dome into, you know, some thousands of year, of year old uh, cavern structure. I think he did that at one point. A piece of advice for if you're eating in Sonora, there is not much in Sonora, but we ate at a place called La Mexicana and the people there were so friendly and the food was so good and like inexpensive. So check that out. That night we had dinner in Fort Davis and we ate at some little restaurant that was probably like one of the most expensive meals we had the whole trip. And I don't know how that kept happening. Maybe just when you're Googling places to eat at, check before you go there. Cause some tiny places you would be surprised. That night, my next must see is the McDonald Observatory. The only bad thing about going to an observatory of any kind late at night is that it's in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna have to drive a little bit further to get to a hotel afterwards. So that was kind of a late night for my family, but a very cool experience. So we went to the McDonald Observatory for one of their star parties, which you have to book ahead of time. But I was really impressed because I kind of thought that it all was ruined when I realized it was cloudy but the person kind of putting on this show because they're basically in a little outdoor theater and then a guy stands in the middle and like points to things in the sky and then you go off and you look at telescopes he really reassured us that not everything is lost and we would still get to see some cool things and we did we got to see saturn Jupiter and the moon. I would still count it as a must see, even if you do happen to get there on a cloudy night, because they can still let you have a great time and they can let you reschedule as well if you want to. Bonus, don't forget to stop at Prada Marfa. It's right outside of Marfa, Texas, going into New Mexico. It's basically a little Prada boutique on the side of the freeway in the middle of the desert. It's kind of a touristy um, art installation. It makes for some really cool pictures. The next place is also a must see, but I would do it differently than we did it. The next day we went to the White Sands National Monument in New Mexico. It was like an eight mile drive and you're just surrounded by white sand. And in the distance there are mountains and when you get there you can rent sleds and go sled down the sand dunes. And I think if you have young kids then they would probably love that. Me and my mom and my dad and my brother, we have fun sledding down them like twice maybe but it was so windy I don't think I've ever been in wind like that that sounds so dramatic but it's because it was and honestly if I put my hair back that probably would have made the biggest difference you have to climb up these really steep sand dunes and you know what it's like to walk in sand it's kind of exhausting if it was hot it would have been even worse the sand would have been sticking to us which Hack, bring baby powder and that'll kind of keep that from happening and help you get it off. But I still would not miss it for the world. You want to give it probably a couple of hours just to be able to um, see 
uh, the desolation of it in a very beautiful way. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. It was beautiful and it literally, it felt like you were on a different planet. But be prepared to be blasted with sand. You're just getting pelted by sand the whole time. Because of that wind, I can only give it nine out of 10. So there were three things that we were going to do in Arizona. We were going to visit Horseshoe Bend, the Grand Canyon, and Antelope Canyon. Now Horseshoe Bend happened on a later date than we planned because apparently there are two horseshoe bends. There's some little river or stream or lake or something that's for some reason called Horseshoe Bend and also located in Arizona. Confusing, right? I'll come back to that in a minute. So let me talk about the Grand Canyon because that's what we ended up actually doing first. We actually had a really good dinner in Flagstaff at a place called Oregano's. They have like giant pasta bowls and garlic bread and it was so, so good. The Grand Canyon was my number one place that we went. You think you know what the Grand Canyon looks like you probably don't. Getting there, I was very surprised that you can't really see the shape at all. It kind of just looks like a giant hole in the ground and you can't see the end of it. And then there's all these little things coming up from the earth inside the hole, making all these weird structures. I also thought it was going to be more orange because in pictures it's always really orange, but it's kind of like when you're looking at mountains in a distance and there's a white cast over it. The Grand Canyon is so big that there's a white cast over it. We ate lunch in the Grand Canyon Village at Bright Angel Lodge at a place called Harvey House Cafe. The food all came out though in less than 10 minutes and it was all very good. Now what to do with the Grand Canyon? I did not know. I planned a lot of details about this trip, but that was one thing I did not really plan. It totally worked out though because it turns out you can get to the Grand Canyon and not really know what to do and just figure it out. There's basically a trail or a path that goes along the edge of you know the south rim you would think because it's so big and you're walking such a small distance in comparison to the whole thing that you wouldn't get a different view as you're walking but you do a lot of people recommend going to north rim grand canyon but we went ahead and went to south rim north rim is less touristy but south rim has the visitor center a lot of restaurants gift shops and they have trams to take you from one place to the next. That is a place I would definitely like to revisit. I felt like um, we could have spent another day, possibly even two days there. I have to give it a nine out of 10. However, if you have a fear of heights. If you're scared of heights, don't go because I made my mom cry because I said five feet from the edge. So like I said, we ended up going to Horseshoe Bend in Page, Arizona. It's a three quarter of a mile walk or hike rather to get to Horseshoe Bend from the parking area. Anyways, my advice for Horseshoe Bend is that I think it is really cool just to stop by if you want to, but I think the weather has to be right for you to do that. It's not a long hike, but it is a tough one. Bring water. I did not bring any water. Be prepared to be patient because it took us a long time to get enough people to move out of the way for us to take a picture. So we went directly after seeing it during the day to Antelope Canyon. This is a must see. We did the lower Antelope Canyon tour. I know there's also an upper one, but the lower one was beautiful. Getting down into the canyon was actually a little bit nerve wracking because you're going down some pretty steep stairs that are like sort of hovering in the canyon and you really have to wait for all of the groups in front of you to get down before you can even continue moving. And then when you first get down into the canyon, there was a lot, there was a large crowd, okay? That was actually the only place where it got really backed up though. We thought it was gonna be like that the whole time but it really wasn't. The rest of the canyon was, first of all, beautiful, okay? It was in my top three places that I went. And I think it was probably in my entire family's top three places that we went. Uh, Antelope Canyon was probably the coolest out of like the natural monument type things, you know, really interesting place. A Antelope Canyon is very narrow. It's all about the light and how it comes in you know, these, these narrow strips. There were a few areas that were tight and claustrophobic, but actually it wasn't too bad because the, the top is so open, you don't really feel closed in. One thing I really enjoyed about that was the tour guide and particularly how technologically savvy our tour guide was for taking pictures and, and, and uh, assisting you and getting a great image for yourself or your family. This would be a great spot for Shelby to insert some now. Um, but they knew that these people knew every setting on your camera where you should do panoramic views, where you should um, use different filters. 
and it really helped you know make this the experience that much better because we got some good memories in digital form that we can look at for years. That being said though, it was so pretty and I think that is definitely a must see. But I have two more places to talk about. On our way to Vegas the next day, I think there's kind of two routes that you can take and one of them takes you directly through Zion National Park in Utah. And I think in all of our heads, we were thinking, how is this going to be any different than the rest of Arizona? Like we were already driving through mountains. We had been for several days, but to all of our surprise, it was different than the surrounding areas. It was really, really pretty. I certainly want to go back. Might have to do it without my wife, Tanya, because she practically ruined the drive through If you're scared of heights, just don't drive through Zion Park because the road is just like this and you're just going down the mountain. You're also driving through a really long tunnel at one point. You know, that's something to keep in mind. If I had seen more of it, I could probably rank it higher, but as it stands, it has to be a nine out of 10. And then the final place that we ended up in was Vegas. And that was the place that we spent the longest amount of time in. Las Vegas, AKA Lost Wages, Nevada. We stayed at a gorgeous hotel. We were, we were at the Bellagio. Okay, so you get to see the fountains. There's a lot of free stuff to do in Vegas because you're take, they're taking your money in other ways. We strolled through Caesars. We had a, a nice meal, actually, in fact, at a, a Gordon Ramsay. It's like a British pub themed restaurant. The the show that we went and saw was kind of crazy good. We saw Mystere, which is one of the Cirque du Soleil shows. There's multiple Cirque du Soleil shows out in, out in Vegas. I think the city of Las Vegas is something that everybody should see before they die. Even if you can't drink or gamble, like. Vegas was definitely the highlight of the trip, the coolest place by far. And on the Tom Matthews scale of rating this road trip, Las Vegas gets a 9 out of 10. I want to leave you off with some final tips for the car ride. We did a thing where each member of my family gave me their top 7 artists of all time and then their top 3 songs from each artist and then I put them all into a playlist and we shuffled the playlist and it played for like a couple hours and I think that's a really cool way to get to know somebody else and to kill the time and to like keep you I guess excited sort of waiting for your next song to come on to show your family or friends. I also made a separate road trip playlist with just some classic road trip songs that I thought the whole family could enjoy. Warning I might want to give you if you go through the route that we took, say West Texas, Arizona, Utah, Nevada travel, you're gonna have a lot of elevation changes. So I recommend a car that's got a little pep or a SUV that has a little zip to it, if you know what I mean. Um, driving isn't really my thing, so that kind of sucked. But if you wanna pass the time quicker, I recommend staying up till about four in the morning, become sleep deprived, just so you can sleep in the car. If you do have to bring a teenager and they're not really excited about it, I recommend going to more cities because that was definitely the highlight of mine. Like, I wasn't really about the caves and stuff. Finally, if you're wondering what I've been looking at this entire time, I bought a little pocket journal. It is Peter Pan themed. I made it a little travel journal. So I marked down times and places and sort of just logged everything that we did. And then at the end, I put some little clippings and I think it's a really cute keepsake. Leave any questions you have below and I will try to get back to you ASAP. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know if I should do kind of a road trip haul because I bought some stuff along the way and maybe I can show you what I got. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already or if you're new here. I guess I will see you guys soon with another video.